Hey guys, what's up? Hope you're doing well. A lot of you probably remember last year when I talked about the opportunity I had to host the world's most renowned marriage and relationship experts, Drs. John and Julie Gottman here in Salt Lake City. We hosted a big event, over 3,000 people attended, and I got to interview Drs. John and Julie Gottman on stage in front of the entire audience. And it was an amazing, magical night. And there was one point during that evening where I remember distinctly sitting on stage, I asked John Gottman a question about some recent research I'd heard about. And when he started to answer, I literally heard an audible gasp in the auditorium. And that, that comment that he made about the research that he conducted was really, really fascinating to me. And it dealt with how scientists can now predict the quality of a marriage using their child's urine. It's super interesting. So before I go into any of the details, I'm just going to kick it over and let you see and hear that section of the interview, and then we'll cut back and I'll tell you what I think about it. I, I heard about a, uh, some research that you mentioned in another interview recently, and I thought it was fascinating, and I was wondering if you could share some of it with, with the audience here. You mentioned that you can um, predict marital, the quality of a marriage by testing the urine of a child. What? Yeah, just buckle up. I heard this and I was like, what? This is yeah. amazing. Can you talk so, a little bit about uh, that? So we did a study, uh, we did a series of studies looking at how children influence relationships, how babies influence relationships, how children are influenced by relationships also. We follow kids from infancy through uh, teenage years. And, uh, and when we were studying four and five-year-old kids, and we studied them up, up until age eight, uh, one of the ideas was to look at the endocrine system. So, you know, we have two stress hormones, adrenaline and cortisol, we secrete. So we can measure some of that in uh, using a 24-hour urine sample uh, that we took from the children. And we just were interested in the emotional development of the children. And part of what we looked at is uh, how kids respond emotionally when their parents are teaching them something new and how their parents teach them, and so on. So one of the surprising findings was when we looked at the amount of stress hormones that the child was secreting in the urine, male and female children, that we could measure how happily married or unhappily married the parents were. So we could either ask the parents how happy they were and use a questionnaire. Or you could just have their kids pee in a cup. Or we could look at, <laughs> and we could look at the, the child's stress hormones in the urine. So the kids are carrying around their parents' conflict yeah. with one another. Uh, and a guy named Mark, Mark Cummings at the uh, University of Notre Dame has studied this and, you know, looking at babies and, you know, looking at parents arguing with one another. And sure enough, you know, kids at very early, early age, when adults are fighting around them, their blood pressure increases, the velocity of their blood increases. So they're very sensitive, even three-month-old babies are very sensitive to conflict. So when we studied uh, three-month-old babies interacting with their parents with, you know, three cameras looking at faces and measuring heart rate in the babies, you know, we actually could see that when the parents were angry with one another, that transferred to the infant and affected the baby's heart. And so the baby gets hurt by this conflict, is, you know, has a lot of trouble focusing attention, you know, so a lot of attention deficit disorder could be spillover from the conflict that the parents are having. That is mind blowing. Yeah. Wasn't that crazy? Okay, so, Here's the thing that I want to talk to you about. Some of the research that I've read shows that couples will wait an average of six years after experiencing something in their relationship, a problem that makes them unhappy or dissatisfied before they seek outside help. So they are in a state of perpetual conflict, stress, anxiety, tension, in an ongoing basis for, for up to six years or even beyond that before they actually try and find somebody to help them through it. And a lot of times these couples will dismiss the problem and say, it's not hurting anybody. We can tolerate it. It's what I call 
a marriage of mutual toleration and you just kind of endure being relatively miserable all the time. And the excuse that we often use is we do it, we stay together for the kids. But what this research is showing is that staying together for the kids in a really unhealthy situation is actually going to cause your kids problems anyway. They absorb the stress, the tension, and it negatively affects them over the long term. And so this is not a podcast about getting divorced if you're having problems. This is a podcast to hopefully spur you to action. You need to know that if you're experiencing problems in your relationship, it is an emergency. It is not something that you can just dismiss or put off or hope that it will get better. Hope is not a strategy that makes marriages successful, hoping that things will change. You need to take responsibility, not only for your life and for your relationship, but for the lives of the people around you, the lives of the people who you are affecting when you aren't getting along with your partner, when you're arguing, when you're stressed out, when you're overwhelmed, when you're burned out, when you're short-tempered, when you're frustrated. Man, that stuff, it's contagious and it's infectious and it contaminates the people around you. And if you're experiencing that, it is your responsibility to step up and do something about it. And it's not something that can wait. It needs to be treated like it's important, the most important thing. I really loved the research that Dr. Gottman found, and to me, this is a testament to the fact that couples, one of the most important things that you can do for the quality of your life, the quality of your marriage, and the quality of the lives of the people who you love the most is to get good at managing conflict. So many couples complain about having communication problems. That's like the number one complaint. Oh, we just struggle with our communication. And most people are actually pretty great communicators. What they struggle with is having difficult conversations. There's topics of conversation that are really difficult for them to navigate. They cause a lot of discomfort. They cause a lot of emotional flooding when these topics come up. And if, if you don't have the tools to navigate these topics, whether it's in-laws or finances or sex or how you're raising kids or how you spend your free time, the list is endless of things that can cause problems. If you aren't good at navigating those conflicts and doing it with grace and doing it in a way that doesn't leave tension in the air, that can infect other people and do it in a way that doesn't involve screaming or yelling or name calling or belittling or shutting down and walling off yourself emotionally from your partner or becoming super defensive or playing the guilt card, the victim card and saying, I guess nothing I can do is right. Like if you can't have those conversations without some of those things happening, then you have work to do. You need to figure out how to master your emotions and master the art of conflict. I'm really excited to tell you a little bit about some tools that I've been working on to help you make that happen. My goal is always to provide you with as many tools and resources as I can to help you have the most epic marriage possible. And I hope, I hope that this podcast is a wake up call for some of you. I hope that you listen to this and go, holy crap, staying together for the kids isn't good enough. Staying together for the kids. If we want to stay together for the kids, the best thing that we can do is stay together and make our marriage amazing so that it not only does it enrich their lives, but it shows them how they can go out and create an epic, life-transforming, enriching, nourishing marriage on their own. That is your job. That should be your goal. Not just to endure each other until your kids move out, but to show them what an amazing marriage looks like. And that happens when you are a continuous student. If you go back a couple episodes, we talked about the infinite game. You need to be constantly striving towards being a better person. And you need to invest in learning the skills and the techniques and the principles that will help you be successful in that endeavor. So if you are one of those people who is struggling right now with managing conflict, stay tuned. There's more to come in upcoming episodes to help you along the way.